Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Oculus Quest Meta Tutorials and in this episode we're going to be making a simple gun fire a projectile. Okay, so I'm going to start off with where we left off last time with a simple scene where I've got the controller, a ball and a plane. I'm going to duplicate this scene, so I'm going to click on our basic controller, Control D. I'm going to rename this to Simple Gun and then double click to open it. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to click on the ball and I'm going to make it a bit small because it's going to be coming firing out the end of a small barrel. I'm not going to mess about with any complex modelling, I'm just going to go straight into our camera rig. I'm going to go on to tracking space, I'm going to the right hand, please feel free to use your left hand. I'm just going to double click, there we go, I'm down where the controllers are. Obviously in the game we'll only see one of those. I'm just going to come to top view, zoom out a little bit, and because I'm still clicked on this, I'm going to right click and say 3D object cylinder. So obviously the cylinder is massive, but right now it's automatically parented, so I could just rename this gun barrel. I'm just going to come to the side view, I'm going to rotate this barrel down. Oops, there we go. So I'm going to rotate this to about 90 degrees. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. That's not perfect. I'm going to have to fix that. There we go, 90. Let's just zero those out, otherwise they'll irritate me. I'm going to shrink this down considerably. Now, the fact that we've rotated it in this way will have a consequence on, on the actual, on the actual um, object and whether it comes out, but we'll figure that out shortly. So I'm going to keep making it a bit smaller. That'll do. Come back to side view. Drag this across a little bit so it's just attached to the front. Still not happy with that, but make it a bit smaller. Then stretch a bit wider. Okay, so now we've got what looks like a barrel coming out at the end of the of the Quest controller. Um, so if you want, what you could do now is do a quick build and run. So if I say build and run, um, this is going to copy across. So we'll have a look at what this is now looking like. Okay, so here we can see a little barrel swishing round. So let's get back on to developing. So first of all, I'm going to go on to Game Controller and I'm just going to remove this script because we don't want it to be spawning the pool balls everywhere in the air. Um, I'm just going to just resize that again. Okay, make it a bit small. So I'm going to come back on to our cylinder, which should be down here somewhere. And then what I need to do is, is have a, an emitter, something that's going to physically fire from. I don't want to fire from the barrel because it's going to sort of mess up with some of the collision detection. So on the cylinder, I'm going to right click, I'm going to add an empty. I'm going to just move that along, and this is where our, our projectile is going to come from. Just to make it a little bit easier to see, to make sure things are tracking properly, and I'm going to remove this a bit later, it's just for helping debug, I'm going to add a cube. I'm going to shrink that right down so we can see that it's supposed to be coming from somewhere. Now I'm going to need a new script now. So I'm going to, um, yep, I'm going to create that. I'm just going to do a quick save as. I had to just mess with the scene, so you might be seeing something a little bit different. Uh, so I'm going to go into test. I'm just going to call this again the simple gun. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm just going to create a new script. So a new script. I'm just going to call this, so oh, I always show with these sort of names. Um, again, I'm just going to call it simple gun script and hope that doesn't clash with the simple gun scene. Okay, just load up in Visual Studio. Or not, perhaps. Let's go back and oh, there, it's still compiling it. It's going to be very similar to the last script, but this time we want to uh, create it and instantiate it with an actual force, so it's going to start moving. So I'm going to hopefully bring that script up. No, it's still not come up. Let's try again. There we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is just, well, just like before, I'm going to have a rigid body. I'm going to cheat a little bit. So I'm creating a rigid body, which I'm still calling ball. I'm going to give it a velocity of 50. Again, this is public, so that means I can easily change the speed of it from within Unity itself. And I'm going to create a Boolean called fire, so we know if it's been fired or not. Now, just like last time, so really you could copy and paste a lot of this code from earlier, from the last script. So I'm just going to come into here. So same again, I've got trigger left, trigger right, so you can attach this to the different guns. Uh, I'm just going to come inside the trigger right. Um, and now again, just like last time, I want to do fire is true. So if we've pressed fire, we're going to set that to true, so we can't just like hold the button down for rapid fire. This is where I'm going to change a little bit. I'm now uh, creating a clone 
of the ball. So a rigid body clone, and then I'm going to instantiate the ball we've made public up here to the position of, of the where that empty is and the rotation of that empty, and we are creating it as a rigid body. The next thing I need to do is add the velocity to it. So clone.velocity equals our transform direction, so it's facing this velocity up here, which of course is 50. So that's how fast our bullet's going to go, our ball. We might want to play about with those speeds. That's going to be something down to your game design. And the next thing I want to do is I want to destroy it. I'm going to let this thing have a lifetime of just three seconds. Okay, so our next little bit is, of course, if we've already pressed fire, I want to make sure you release the trigger. So just like last time, I think I've just laid on too many braces. There we go. So now it's going to make sure that you release the trigger to, to fully open, well, almost fully open. They don't set fire to false, allow you to pull the trigger again. So it's just like, um, yeah, got to pull the trigger. So I'm just going to press save on that. I'm going to come back into Unity. Let's move that to reload. There's a couple of things I just need to do um, very quickly, which is on our cube, on the cube, I want to just turn off the box collider. I don't want it interfering. Um, I'm just going to click on our game object. I'm going to call this our um, fire origin. Um, just so it'll make it easy to find in a moment. So on our fire origin, I'm going to drag our simple gun script. Okay, so there we go. What are we projecting? Well, right now, nothing. So I need to go and find our sphere, our pool ball. I'm going to drag that. So, oh, no, I'm not because I've not clicked it. Come back on fire origin, click on sphere over there. And now when we pull the trigger, it should fire. So as always, we're going to press save. Let's go and see what's happening. So I'm just going to press build and run. And I shall pause the video while it's making. In fact, first of all, build settings. This is very important. I want to add our open scene. There we go. And I just want to make sure that we are just building the simple gun. So I can now say build and run. Um, Yep, that'll do. Test five. Yep, I shall be with you in a moment. Okay, so now I'm firing. We can see it's not firing the right direction. Um, so what we need to do is we need to change the rotation of the empty that I created. So if I just type in fire, fire origin, I can zoom straight over to it, zoom out a little bit. Now we saw it was firing out of the barrel down. So from our fire origin, I'm just going to rotate that back up instead. And it's all because of it being attached to the cylinder. Um, because that's the cylinder, we rotate the cylinder down. It thinks this is the way the barrel is facing. So if I just move this up, back up a little bit. Um, I've gone a bit too far there. So I'm just going to put minus 90 in. Oops, slips on the keyboard there, minus 90. Again, press save. Let's go and check this out now. Just to make this a little bit easier, and we just change this velocity right down so we can see it going slow instead. So again, build and run, it's already in this current scene, so it'll be fine. I guess I'll pause it back when it's when it's loaded up. Okay, so now you can see it's firing just where we want it to go to. Um, now obviously it's going a bit slow, so I can go back onto our fire origin. And I can bring this back up to 50, or whichever other speed you're happy with. Um, so that's it really. Now, there is a couple of more things. If I say I want to put some walls around this scene, I could very quickly bring in um, a new object. So I'm just going to bring in create 3D object cube. I'm going to turn this into a large wall, so I'm just going to scale this up. Oops, maybe a bit too big there. That's a bit wider. I'm going to move it up. Now I know in our Oculus um, assets, there was a brick texture, so I'm just going to type in brick. Oops, if I spelt it correctly. There's brick, I'm going to drag it on. Uh, I'm going to make that a bit wider. I'm just going to put ourselves in some little walls to show something about the collision detection. I'm going to just press Ctrl D to rotate, to, to, sorry, to duplicate. Now I'm going to rotate that. I'm going to move it down. It's not perfect, it doesn't really matter for now. Control D to duplicate, push this to the side. I've now got some walls. Now, now the ball's moving pretty fast, uh, and I'd, I'd urge you to go and try it now, fire it against the walls. It's going to travel through the walls sometimes, and certainly through the ground sometimes, because it's going too fast. The way to fix this is to click on the sphere. When we come over here, collision detection, change it to continuous. It will now continuously check, uh, rather than just occasionally checking. So the collision becomes more accurate um, and with a little more time 
you could go and build another scene. Let's see if I can find my other one. Is it in this one? I'm just going to press save. So I've already gone to another area where I've created a couple more obstacles. I've got some cubes with a test dummy on. I can press the button and I've text continuous dynamic for the rigid body. This makes it more accurate when shooting. So I'll take a look at that and I shall see you in the next episode where we'll probably be adding some, maybe some sound effects and maybe actually destroying when they are hit. So I shall see you next time. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more content, please do consider liking, subscribing and a positive comment below.